Day begins on Monday, April 22nd, and ABC News is kicking off a new series called The Power of Us, mm -hmm. People, Climate, and Our Future. Here to tell about it is ABC News Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z. Hey. Day, or yeah. close to it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, before we get to the reporting on Earth yeah. Week, um, I want to ask you about the solar eclipse, mm -hmm. which um, we had two weeks ago. I missed it. I was at home watching. I was watching Netflix. I didn't oh, even... <laughs> but we got the glasses, Joy. Yeah, yeah. I know, but I, I, I'm not interested. I'm, I'm very... Um... <laughs> I'm very unpoetic. You're very grounded. Well, yeah, I just, I, you know, look cloudy out. What am I going to look at? That's why you need With the, the glasses. glasses. You can see it. Oh, it's, cool. It was cool. Well, you know what? <laughs> anyway, Next you were, time. Anyway, you were, like the sun anyway. You were She's... reporting on it from live from Illinois, yes. correct? Yeah, in and the back I, of totality. So we yeah. went for the big, big, big full Ooh. show. So, it was gorgeous. And I went, and someone told me Wait, that you're you... you're looking at it without the glasses. Well, so in the path of totality is the only you place can? you can yeah. once oh. it's for those four minutes, and then you got to put the glasses back on. Oh, that's so cool. Yes, but and so I, I we got. I was reading that you are, were very emotional about it. So what was I missing? Yeah. I missed something because obviously. Well, you I were watching, watching Netflix. I know. What did I miss exactly? Was there like some kind of orgasm I was supposed oh. to have? It, essentially, yes. And I think first, it's 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 actually. I, I had a it delayed for four minutes. Four full minutes. That's pretty good. Do you and you missed? Can it. you imagine you missed that? <laughs> Tough to recreate. Um, so we. I missed it too, and I'm not. This conversation, I'm having a lot of remorse and regret. Four minutes? Yeah. Four minutes. When and is eight, it coming back? Eight seconds. Uh, we could go to one in Montana in 20 years. So what, what, <laughs> what was so great about it to you? Scientifically, that's during the event. It felt very much like when I started storm chasing when I was in yeah. college, mm -hmm. and when I would see a tornado that wasn't hurting people and it was out there, the power of nature yeah. and what it can do. Mm -hmm. Like I imagine that people that are sports fans, that's what it feels like. Like, there's this real elation. Uh -huh. um, other people during the eclipse, Robin and Wit, people were crying. They were having full mm. emotional breakdowns in a good way. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. you feel very small. It puts you into perspective. Yeah. I had a delayed emotional reaction. Mm. And it wasn't until eight hours later on the airplane home, and I felt like an energy shift. Mm. That's what happens after four minutes of elation, mm. apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you, you, I, you weren't like on a, on a, like chasing tornadoes, like on Twitter, yeah, like yeah. in a movie? Yes, that's, yeah. I was inspired. That's, I, I loved meteorology and I never knew what I wanted to do with it. And then I saw when I was 16 Like when you were a little girl, you said, I want to be a meteorologist when oh, I grow did. up? Yeah. Been a, yeah, I was eight. eight forever. Yeah. Wow. yeah, and I saw, I saw a water spout on Lake Michigan and that's what turned me on to the science. And then, it, like, I knew I didn't want to be one of those people on TV talking about weather. That's really <laughs> what I didn't want. I didn't know. And then oh. finally I saw the storm chasing and Helen Hunt's character. Yep. And I was like, that's what I can be. I see. So I went to college where we got college credit to chase tornadoes. Well, wow. and Ginger, you're such an important voice on our airwaves talking about climate change and what we can be doing and what we need to know about. And the Copernicus Climate Change Service released a report recently that said we had the warmest March on record this year, mm -hmm. which continued a pattern of 10 consecutive mm -hmm. hottest months on record. Yeah. How concerning should this be? It's always concerning when we see how rapidly the Earth is warming. And yes, it has always warmed. We have been in cycles, that's what Earth does. But it's why we're warming. Mm -hmm. It's right. because of emissions, primarily right now. Mm -hmm. And so to see it when we have 2012, when you had a month or two that were the warmest on record, when you have 2016 or 17, I'm forgetting now, you have a month or two, 10 months in a row, we are in <coughs> unprecedented territory. And it's not just, oh, this tiny bit. On the graphic, you're going a half degree, which is huge when you're looking at the global average temperature. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yes, extremely concerned. Ginger, next week, ABC News is kicking off a new series for Earth Week called The Power of Us, People, the Climate, and Our Future. Mm -hmm. And you'll be reporting on solar geoengineering. Mm -hmm. Can you break that down for us? Yes. And so this is something that people misunderstand quite a bit. Basically, we have engineered our atmosphere already by emitting greenhouse gases. Mm -hmm. That has warmed it. What this is saying, and we've known how to do this for a long time, it's just we haven't yet done it, is that we could engineer clouds, put mirrors in space. There are a lot of different ways that we could reflect sunlight to cool us and oh. create kind of a Band-Aid of sorts mm. um, for the problem. Now, the root of the problem is the carbon dioxide, the right. methane emissions, the things that right. we know that are happening. But, but scientists are very much, and politicians, and yeah. are really invested on both sides of this as to should we start manipulating the earth to cool it. We talked oh. yesterday with Jennifer Granholm yeah. about this, yeah. and we discovered that half of the Republican Party, mm -hmm. people who are Republicans, mm -hmm. believe that climate change is a hoax. And I think that number has gone down, which is mm -hmm. good. I think that the science is 
hopefully, and the data, which is exactly what we have, there is yeah. no, there's no debate, right? Like, it's no. not like, what do you believe? That That's more about but religion. What, and there's a big generational give... shift to younger Republicans yes, they almost be. universally yeah. believe in climate change. It's a, it, it But you know what? Difference. Instead of just saying, oh, there's going to be rain or something, yep. talk about the yep. climate problem. That's what we do. She does a lot. Really often. do it. Yeah, that's yeah. what we're, we try to do at least one of my hits on Good Morning America, just to bring <sighs> that Act, the facts about what's actually happening right now because people need data, right? Like that's how you get to the base of it. It's not about belief, it's about presenting data, just like I present temperature. Mm -hmm. Same thing, the right? right? Is, it's not a hoax, right? No, no, it is so not a hoax. Viewers, it's not a hoax. Sure wish it were a hoax. That <laughs> no. would be now, great. talking about manipulating mm -hmm. um, uh, the weather, um, when you were last here for Earth Week, you talked about cloud seeding, which mm -hmm. we were all really excited about. It's a weather modification technique that improves a cloud's ability to produce rain. Correct. I think we were all just so blown away by it. The um, UAE, though, authorities dispatched cloud seeding planes mm -hmm. this week, and on Tuesday, Dubai had the heaviest rain in 75 years, mm -hmm. shutting down much of the city. Mm -hmm. People are blaming it on the cloud seeding. So when we did our cloud seeding story, we did it domestically, but we also have been in touch with the UAE because they are the leaders in the world of cloud seeding. Mm -hmm. They run 24-7 operations during their wet season. Wow. We learned a lot about what they do wow. and what they don't do. And they're incredibly proud about being the leaders in this. Mm -hmm. In this event specifically, they were not seeding in that area. And cloud seeding oh. is very regional. So it's very much like you can't, <laughs> and at the bottom of everything, you can't, with cloud seeding, do what happened in Dubai. Mm. Okay. That system, that weather system, was very well predicted. There was a blocking pattern. So who that are they was blaming it on? It there. The, I mean, should... They're blaming it on Menendez's wife. <laughs> <laughs> we should blame it on the low pressure system that was sitting over them and that was blocked. Now, what I do know will happen, and I know will be one of the factors, they'll go and do an attribution study to see how much our warmer climate mm. has been a part yeah, of that because yeah. warmer air in general, and there's quite a bit of complexity to this, but can hold more moisture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing events all over this country, all over the world, where you would have, you know, a half inch or an inch more than what you would have had. It's a big deal when you're yeah. talking about the desert. Mm. And Ginger, another thing you're going to be reporting on next week is the Navajo Nation yes. and their lack of electricity. Can you tell us a little about it? It floored me. Uh, in Navajo Nation, there are still 15,000 homes, estimated 60,000 people that don't have electricity. Mm. The year is 2024. Wow. And it's not just because they're rural. They actually live under power lines and have for 60, 70 years. But those power lines were not for them. What states are these? This is in northeastern Arizona, okay. where we went with a guy named Brett Isaac. And he has lived in this oppression of being disconnected from the world. How did they manage? Uh, they, they manage, and they've adapted. But he it's said... like the Amish. Yeah, and, and here's the even crazier part. Yeah. His father, his grandfathers, um, his uncles, all lived in the coal plant that fed those power lines wow. that didn't go to their homes. Well, how do we get them electricity? Yeah, so Brett's doing it. That's why he started mm -hmm. Navajo Power, because he said, I can't do this anymore. Right. And plus, that coal plant shut down. And so he started this solar company, and they're going to have a huge solar field on uranium mines, but mm -hmm. also he's going in off-grid solar and bringing it. So we got to go to this woman, Eleanor Paddock's house, and got to see her get electricity for the first time. Oh. Beyond turning a light on, beyond having a refrigerator to put your stuff in. Yeah, there's wow. that. She was most excited, because she's a substitute teacher, about doing her lesson plans at home, That's plugging in her laptop. It's a combo oh. for Jennifer Granholm and also for Deb Haaland, who's yeah. the, the first Native yeah. American on and the planet. And she definitely knows, and I have to say real quick, there's another layer, it was called the Bennett Freeze, and that was a law until 2009 that essentially blocked electricity from getting to those people. So wow. when we talk about Political. environmental injustice, yeah. it's not mm. back in the 1950s and 60s, it's so more It's exciting. very interesting wow. stuff. Keep going with it. Thank yeah. you. Very good, thank you. Thanks to Ginger Z, the power of US, of us, people, the climate, and our future.